Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter and today we're gonna to talk about my favorite things from 2016. Twenty sixteen was an amazing year. Lots of interesting things came out. In this video, I want to talk about some of my favorite things, not necessarily that came out in twenty sixteen, although some of them did, but things that I just really enjoyed this year when it comes to equipment and uh, tools that I really, really enjoyed using. I also want to talk about some of the top videos on the channel this year. So if you're new, here's a couple of videos you might want to go back and check out if you haven't seen them already. By far, the most popular video this year, which blew me away and I wasn't expecting, was the slow motion video. So essentially I took a slider and a couple other pieces of gear and showed you how you could in post get some really interesting effects using slow motion and doing something a little more interesting than just a slow pan or tilt on a product or a person. The next most popular video was my budget lenses video. I essentially went over three really affordable, really great lenses. So check that out if you're in the market for some fresh glass. The next video was the Ikea table hack where I took an Ikea table, turned it into a small product booth um, that one did very well, I think because there was some interesting lighting techniques. So um, in 2017, I'm going to try to focus a lot more on lighting. So a little more than your standard three-point lighting setups, trying to really um, get people thinking about techniques with lighting, modifiers, and how to really push their lighting no matter what they shoot. And the fourth most popular video that came out this year was the A6300 versus GH4 video. So many people asked me about that comparison. And I think it was because the GH4 was getting pretty low in cost and the A6300 was still kind of new. So um, that was the fourth and final big video this year that came out that people really uh, seem to enjoy watching. And that brings us to gear this year. And I have got a little tape next to me that I'm going to bring a little closer and we're going to talk about a couple different categories stuff that I really dug this year first and foremost the a6300 no surprise um, the reason I picked this camera is it changed so many of my opinions when it comes to gear and specifically lenses I have been anti autofocus for a long time and you know there weren't really that many good solid autofocus cameras that um, were something I'd be interested in. I know the 70D was great, the 80D is good, but both of those are pretty expensive, but you were lacking features like 4K and other things. So this camera has so much packed into it and the autofocus completely changed my opinion. I used to hate Sony lenses. Their manual focus was horrible, blah, 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 blah. But now I almost exclusively shoot autofocus on this and other Sony cameras. Big, big fan. So this camera, um, really changed my opinion, and it's still a really solid budget-friendly camera. The next camera is kind of cheating, and that's the G85. I just got it at the end of the year here in December, um, and this camera is going to be, I think, the best all-arounder going into 2017. I do have a review coming out for it soon. We're actually right now on the set of the G85 video guide, so I'll be producing a $20 guide that you guys will be able to pick up, walking you through really perfecting video on this camera. This camera is so good. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it so much, so I'm gonna to have to not send this back to B&H and purchase it. It is so fantastic. So stay tuned for more content on this guy. The next camera I really enjoyed this year was my C100. And this is kind of a ridiculous setup, but this camera shot pretty much every single video you saw this year on this channel. It is just an animal and they're getting more affordable. So let me know if you'd like to see more content on the C100. This is the Mark One, And um, I just had it on a long lens sitting on the other end of the studio and it just worked consistently. It was always set up, ready to go. No external accessories, just this the candle with the audio. And I ran a, a, a XLR cable over to the microphone really solid camera, really dig it. Unfortunately, it might not see as much action this year, and I'll talk about that more coming up in future videos. But um, with the price coming down, this is becoming a fantastic all-arounder. It's, you know, a little big. Obviously, I have a huge lens on here, but um, just a trooper, a real trooper and a solid camera. The camera I'm looking forward to playing with more, I actually have it here. That is the A6500, and uh, there will be a, a review as well as a guide coming up in 2017, and um, I'm excited to really push this thing to the limit and see how it compares to the G85, since those are kind of on the same playing field. So A6500, going to see a lot on this camera in 2017. I have two 
items in the audio department that really helped me out this year and I think are great choices. The first is a microphone. It is a little itsy bitsy budget friendly video micro from Rode. This is a $59 microphone and it blew my socks off. I've used this all around the studio for several different videos. Um, the size, the price, and the fact that it doesn't suck. It's, it's pretty amazing. So if you uh, shoot on anything but a Canon DSLR, this is a great option. Even if you have a little money to spend on other things, you can't really go wrong with this. The size is great. It comes with a dead kitten cat, um, which is the only microphone that you can purchase this with um, stock. So really dig it. The removable cable is awesome. If you want to learn more about this and all the Rode mics and which one is really best for you, you should definitely check out my Rode video mic showdown where I go over every single video mic and we look at which one is best for you, how you shoot, how you use microphones, and which camera you have. The second piece of audio gear is the Ceramonic Smart Rig Plus. I've got a review on this. This little guy right here is a Swiss army knife of audio devices for cameras. Um, so many different options. You can hook up up to four microphones. Um, you've got two knobs to control two channels. So great little device. Um, I'm going to try to do more content on preamps and why I consider them better over recorders. And there's a lot of stuff about that. But essentially, this is a much better version of a preamp than what you'll find on like stuff like the H4N, yada, yada, yada. So great device, really dig it, and it's only $99. Now let's talk about post-production stuff for 2016. The biggest change for me was building a Hackintosh. And I know I've been meaning to do a video. There will be one in 2017, early 2017, talking about my Hackintosh and giving you guys some information and where to seek out information to build your own. I'll have a list of all the parts, all that good stuff. Related to that, uh, my Dell 4K monitor or Ultra HD uh, monitor has been a lifesaver this year. Now that I've been shooting almost exclusively on 4K, except for the C100, that monitor has been awesome. Um, if you couple that with the Spider Pro um, little puck where you can make sure your color calibration is perfect, you will be blown away with the results, how different it is from a stock monitor but also just the resolution, um, the IPS panel, it's been great and it's really affordable. I think the 24 inch is under $400, well under $400. Um, so that is a fantastic monitor if you're thinking about a production monitor or just a monitor for you know editing video. And while we're talking about editing video, Final Cut 10.3, Man, that's been really good stuff. I've really been enjoying that. Very subtle, but it is such a great experience to edit on that platform. Big lighting changes in 2016 for me. Um, first of all, I did that video, uh, seven LED lights under $50. Huge response from that, so I'm gonna try to keep doing those kind of series and um, talk about definitely lights under 100 bucks or between 50 and 100. That's coming soon. But my favorite light has been this uh, YN300 Air. I've used this so much since that video. I didn't think I would, it would be my favorite, but um, it has kind of a milk diffuser built onto it. So it's going to be softer, but I love this thing for little accents here and there. Um, if you've seen pretty much any B-roll, often this will be sitting on the table with the stand it comes with, um, kind of behind stuff doing a nice soft rim light or kicker. It is a bi-color light takes, you know, standard batteries. So definitely check out that video if you want to see this and other great lights under $50, but I really enjoyed this little guy. Also in the lighting department was the Flex LED. Every single video you saw over at the bench was lit with the Flex LED. That thing is just such a beast. It is so bright. It is very light, so it worked great on my uh, arm system over there at the bench and just a real trooper. So, you know, it's it's kind of expensive, but if you're looking for a one-stop shop for bright, durable, flexible, literally light, you can't beat the flex. And then finally for lighting, I've really been enjoying the Aperture Light Dome. It's lighting me right now. You can stick any Bowens mount LED light on it, but I've really enjoyed using it and look forward to putting it to work quite a bit in 2017. So that does it for gear from 2016. Going into 2017, here's some things you can expect to see on the channel. First and foremost, more tutorials for YouTubers and filmmakers. I really want to dive into taking almost a zero budget or even a somewhat decent sized budget uh, for YouTubers setting up spaces, setting up little studios, um, as well as filmmaking tutorials, stuff like the slow motion uh, video that we looked at. More comparisons for sure. So we're gonna look at more budget LED lights, uh, lots of microphone stuff and light stands, cameras, and compare them all together, as well 
as kind of budget kits. So I have plans already in some of the gear to talk about the perfect $200, $250 lighting kit, a $500 lighting kit um, that'll give you the most bang for your buck. So let me know if you like to see more stuff like that. And of course, we'll continue with reviews, camera reviews of the G85, the A6500 and whatever else 2017 throws at us. The final thing you're going to see is a lighter Caleb, hopefully. I've had a lot of back issues the last uh, month, two months, um, haven't really been able to work out, so I'm hoping to lose some pounds. You'll probably also notice continuing lightness of hair as I lose it. So um, that is what you can look forward to in 2017. Again, thank you guys so much for being such um, an awesome community to work for. Let me know what you enjoyed from 2016 and what you would like to see in 2017. That does it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one.